everyone it is nomadic mesa bringing you another video on the journey to esl teaching so today we are going to talk about finding a job don't mind me i like i said in the last video i'm looking at my notes because i want to make sure that i cover everything so that you know what you're getting into and what to expect and also, this is a way to make sure that I'm going through every detail and not forgetting things as well. Okay? So, let's get started. Finding a job. First thing to do. Where do you look? So, there are lots of different job boards. You can just go to any search engine and type in ESL teaching jobs and a lot of job boards will pop up. But I have a few of them that I use when I'm looking for a new job. So for example, there's eslcafe.com. There's also teachaway.com. There's teachingnomad.com. And there's also goldstarteachers.com. I'll list a few of those in the description below so that you can see it later on. Now, you can go to the, any of them, any at all. You can look at the jobs. Most of them will have like uh, an area where it says, okay, what country and what age group, what level of English and stuff like that. So that you can narrow down your choices to something specific so it's pretty much very easy and most of the time when it comes to job boards I will be very specific I've been teaching for years now as an ESL teacher I've taught many levels like for example in Korea I taught middle school and high school in China I taught adults and currently I am teaching uh, kind of like preschoolers, kindergarten, and like really small children in a training center. And later on this year, actually in a couple of weeks, since I'm changing jobs, I will go back to middle school in an actual public school. So you have to be specific on what you really, really want. Now, Let's talk about the different types of places you can work. In China and also in most Asian countries, there'll be at least three to four different types of companies or let's say education systems, well not systems, but let's say education centers you can go into. There's a training center. Training centers are really, 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 really big in Asia because 
After the kids go to regular school, they go to training centers. Most of the time it's for English or for extracurricular things or even just language in general. Now, let's see, there's also public schools. You can do public schools. There's also private schools. You can do private schools as well. And then there's kindergartens and stuff like that. And there's also international schools. There are those out there as well. So here's one thing I want you to be aware of when it comes to training centers. Training centers have different hours. Sometimes those hours can be a little taxing. Depending on where you are and how things are going. So, for example, training center in China. You will have a weekday for your off days. So, like, let's say you have two off days. You have those two. Let's say they could be Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday. You would never have Saturday and Sunday. Saturdays and Sundays are the busiest days ever because that's when everyone has free time. So training centers are usually very packed and just busy because Saturday everyone is free. Now, also with training centers, especially in China, your hours... Your working hours will start later in the day. They won't be like from 9 to 5. So in my current training center, my day starts at 2 p.m. And I will leave at 9 p.m. But then this depends on the day. On the weekends, you will go in early and leave early. So on the weekends, my day will start at probably like 9 a.m. And I will leave, depending on how many classes I have, I will leave at 6.30 p.m. So yes, it's just one of those things. It depends on where you're going to. So that's the training center. Now, public schools, international schools, and kindergartens, they will have regular hours. They will start in the morning. So at the kindergarten that I'm working at right now, we start at 7.50 in the morning, and then we don't leave until 5.30 p.m. Some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, that's not a nine to five, that's more hours. Why is it so many hours? In the afternoon, especially at this kindergarten, and in public schools as well, in China, they take a two-hour break in the middle for lunch. At the kindergarten right now, so from, let's say, 8 o'clock to um, 11.30, they will have their classes, their simple classes right now. And then they will go to lunch. After that, they'll do some little exercises before they take their naps. So yes, they will take their naps for at least two hours in the kindergarten. And then you have those two hours to either go out or do some work in the office. It, it's up to you. For example, for me in the kindergarten, I have three choices. Three choices. Do more work in the office. I could go out and just do whatever I need to do. Just as long as I'm back before 2.30. Or in the kindergarten, I have the opportunity to go take a nap in the dormitories that they have on campus. Yeah. <laughs> Kindergartens in China, especially the most expensive ones, and the high price ones, they will have living quarters for their teachers, especially the foreign teachers. So that is a plus. But we've gotten sidetracked on what we're talking about here. But those are 
something more extra for you to think about in terms of job hunting as well. Now, back on topic. I forgot where I was, but it's okay. So we talked about where to look. Now, when it comes to applying for a job, when you actually get someone to say, okay, we would like to interview you and we would like your information, always have these things handy. So have your scan copies of your passport page, your degree, your TOEFL certificate or your TESOL certificate, and your background check. You can hold off on the background check for just the simple fact that that'll come later. If you're applying for a job, your background should be clean anyway, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to have that on hand right then and there. You can apply for it when you get to the visa process. And also, ahead of time, make an intro video. Some job board sites will actually ask you for your intro video and your resume. Those are the two most important things, intro video, resume. And also take a good professional picture as well to post on that as well, all right? Now the next thing, let's say you get more than one offer. This has happened to me quite a few times, like this year, especially with the pandemic going on. Hmm, living in China, oh. a lot of teachers left the country. So there is a very, very extremely high demand for foreigners to be teachers. So lots of different job opportunities have popped up. So let's think about how to narrow your choices down. So consider the location. In my three years of being in China, I've only stayed in one city, Shenzhen. Shenzhen is in the south. It's so close to Hong Kong. It's like Shenzhen is here and the border to Hong Kong is like right next door. So it's easy to go in between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. However, I have lived in different districts in Shenzhen. So like right now, I'm living in a different district than I did last year. And later on, when I change jobs, I will be moving to another district. But I always stay in the city because let me give you this one pointer. It's easier to manage things when you have your base here. When your base is here, you know people, you know the area, it's great because you don't have to worry about certain things. For example, with me, my first two years of teaching adults, I gained a lot of local friends. And those local friends, they helped me. They have helped me with the smallest of things, like helping me find an apartment translating for me <laughs> and even they have helped with helping me move so I like to keep that community and that lasting relationship with them so this is why I don't move to like a different city in China and then I also like Shenzhen because if you think about it Shenzhen is very multicultural for the simple fact that not a lot of people, especially Chinese people, are born in Shenzhen. A lot of people migrated to Shenzhen for job opportunities. So if you think about it, there are lots of different people from different parts of China, which gives you a multicultural feel in a sense. So yes, that's that. Now, next thing to consider when narrowing down your choices, benefits. If the school is going to offer housing, that is a benefit. If the school is offering like, let's say, 
mm, a certain a certain amount of money. I don't like to narrow things down according to money because I will say this when it comes to money sometimes money is not all that it's worth because the most high paying jobs can be the most taxing on your on your mentality it can be stressful and it's just not worth it because in the end you're going to hate it so don't just focus on money but other benefits could be like Promotion opportunities. If the job is looking for development, if they're going to help you develop. Like, for example, my first company, which was EF, English First. There were lots of opportunities for development. Like I said, I got my cert TESO there. So that was a good benefit. And then also other things came along as well. Now, the next thing, so uh, one thing I want to point out, when it comes to housing in China, not a lot of schools will provide housing. However, they will give you the money to pay for your housing. So that's just fine as well. But if you do find one that provides housing, that's just fine too. Another thing, look at the company's reputation with foreigners. You don't want to sign up with a company that's discriminating against its foreign teachers or even treating them badly. Yeah, I wouldn't want that either. Another thing you can think about is that there are plenty of opportunities. If you've applied for different levels, like you applied for kindergarten, primary school, middle school, high school, or even teaching adults, know that teaching adults will not pay that much. It's always the kids that get paid more. <laughs> I hated that, but I loved my experience of teaching adults. It was great because I learned more about the culture when I was teaching adults. And you gain local friends that way as well. So um, as far as narrowing down, that is pretty much all I have to say. It's really ultimately up to you. And one more thing about narrowing down. Make sure that your company is legit. I don't want any of you coming into the country where, especially China, China is very, very, very strict on their immigration rules and their visas and stuff like that. I don't want you coming into the country where you were told that you would get a visa, but then they didn't follow through with completing the visa process, like getting your work permit and then getting your Res temporary residence permit and then they're going to have you jump back and forth back and forth between different countries let's say you're in Shenzhen maybe they'll have you do a visa jump to Hong Kong just to update your Z visa that is illegal don't go for it make sure they are legit a way to do that is reputation. Look at their reputation. Don't go for small companies. Small companies aren't always the most legit. Go for the big ones. It's better to start with the big ones because they have the experience. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for thousands and thousands of teachers. And it's a good way to get yourself in because smaller companies might leave you hanging i would hate for any of you to go through that it's not pleasant at all but big companies they will pave the way for you eventually so that you are 
not having as much of a headache because eventually you might get to a point where you say, okay, I don't want to be with this company anymore, so I'm going to leave. But at least then you'll have the experience of what the process is and how it works, okay? Now, that is all I have for finding a job. So I will talk to you guys later. Remember, this is Nomadic Nisa. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Yes, share, share, please share. All right, I will talk to you guys later with another video. Bye! Thank you.